Well, welcome everyone. It's great you can join us tonight for this sermon. Um, We're going to be looking at Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11 to 14. We're taking a break. It's still the holidays, so we won't be looking at 1 Corinthians, and we're going to be looking at Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11 to 14. I encourage you to open up. Please be looking at me, with me, as we look at this passage. So, Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11 to 14. We have much to say about this, but it is hard to explain because you are slow to learn. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's Word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Let's pray. Our great God, we come before you now, before we look at your word, because we know we need your help. We need your spirit to work in us. We need your spirit to bring conviction. We need your spirit to give us understanding. And we need your spirit to transform our lives by your word. We need your spirit to give us faith in what we hear, faith in you, God, And we need your spirit to work in us obedience. And so we pray now that you would do this by your spirit. Please be working in us. Please be working in me, convicting me, and helping me to share faithfully to the truth of what you say. And may what we hear tonight be your words. May you be telling us to grow up into maturity. May your word be saying this to us. May it not be my words, but may it be your words. And we pray all of this for your glory and honor. Amen. Well, people are always wanting to grow up. Toddlers want to become kids. Uh, Bigger kids want to become teenagers. Teens want to become young adults, and it keeps on going. And maybe the desire stops as you get into your 20s and you realize that what's ahead is more your body falling apart and more responsibility, and sometimes that desire stops as we grow up a bit more. But it's natural, isn't it, to want to grow up? to progress, to mature. People are always looking to the season ahead, to the progress they will make and all the good things that are going to come. Growing up's a a great thing and it's an essential thing as well for the Christian. If a Christian isn't growing up, it's actually deadly. We all know that if someone doesn't grow physically or mentally, something's wrong, something's tragically wrong. And it's even more tragic when a Christian doesn't spiritually grow. Stale, still, stagnant Christians are in eternal trouble. We either follow Jesus or we reject him. We're either going forward or actually drifting away. It's like we're in a river. We're either swimming diligently upstream in that river or we're lying back relaxing and we think we're staying still but we're actually slowly drifting down to a waterfall of destruction. If we don't progress and mature as Christians, we are drifting. Either you are being matured to follow Jesus by the Spirit of God at work in you, or you are content with straying from Him because you are not His. So a Christian, they desire to grow. A Christian desires to grow. They hunger for progress spiritually. So I ask you, do you? Do you long to mature in Christ? Do you long to grow? I do. I really want to. And I hope it is your longing too. Because something is wrong if you're a Christian and it's not your longing. We should long to grow up. We should long to no longer be spiritual babies but become mature. This should be the longing of a Christian. When Valley, my my daughter, one of my daughters, when she gets called a baby, she's not happy. And she says, I'm not a baby. I'm not a baby. She doesn't like getting called a baby. She wants to grow up. She wants to be like her big sister, Pearl. And if you're a baby Christian, you should want to grow up. You should not be content being a baby. And the author of Hebrews, he wanted this for his readers too. He wants to see them mature and endure in Christ. He wants to see them progress in the faith and persevere. But they had a problem stopping this. They had something that was breeding immaturity in them. And we get hints of it all throughout the letter and see some of the danger that they're in. So let me sweep through now the letter quickly 
to see some of this. In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1, we read, We must pay closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. In Hebrews 3, the author says, Consider Jesus, and in chapter 12, verse 3, he says, Consider him, and all throughout the letter, the supremacy of Jesus is shown, because these people aren't seeing him properly. In chapter 3, verse 12, the author says, Take care, brothers, lest there be in any of you an unbelieving, an evil, unbelieving heart, leading you to fall away from the living God. In chapter 4, verse 11, it says, Strive to enter that rest so that no one may fall into the same sort of disobedience. Hebrews 10, 23 says, Hold fast the confession of our hope. Hebrews 10, 35, Do not throw away your confidence, which has great reward, for you have need of endurance. Hebrews 12, 2, Run with endurance. And Hebrews 12, 15, See that no one fails to obtain the grace of God. Something is clearly wrong here in these readers. We see it again and again, and the author keeps on warning them and urging them. He, he wants them to endure and mature. So what's the picture we get through all this letter? Well, we keep on seeing here, as we've seen through these readings, we keep seeing that these people are failing to see the truth in Christ and pursue Him. They're not living according to the truth that they know with belief and with obedience. And they're failing to mature and progress in the faith. And because of persecution, the persecution they're facing, they're being tempted to return to Judaism. They're wavering and they're drifting instead of enduring in Christ. And this is why they need these warnings, to not drift, to not fall away, to not throw away their confidence. The author wants them to pay attention, to consider Jesus, to consider what they've heard in Christ, so they do not fall back to the Judaism that just points to him. But why are they like this? What's at the root of their issue? What's the root cause? I think the author gives at least two reasons that cause this. In chapter 3, he hints at one of them. He shows there, in chapter 3, the danger of a hardened heart, which causes this. But in our passage as well, in chapter 5, verse 11, he gives a clear diagnosis of their problem. The NIV says in chapter 5, verse 11, they are slow to learn. The Greek literally says they are dull of hearing or that their ears are sluggish. The Hebrews have a hearing problem. That's what we see. And it's hindering their maturity. Spiritual hearing problems are deadly. They can have a great effect on us spiritually. Have you ever had a, just a physical hearing problem? Ringing in the ears, an earache, maybe blocked ears? You would know if you've had one of those, some of the debilitating effects that can have on you. And spiritual hearing problems are deadly and have great debilitating effects. And they can run rampant through Christians. They stop people. They're deadly because they stop people from seeing the truth in Christ and responding properly to Him. They stop people from maturing and growing. And so we need to check. You need to check. Do you have this hearing problem? This may be what is hindering your maturity and your growth. As we go through this passage now, as we go through it, you need to check, do I have this problem? The problem of dull hearing. So make sure you're open to, in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11, and I'll read the first verse there. Hebrews 5, verse 11. We have much to say about this, but it is hard to explain because you are slow to learn. Here in verse 11, the, the author stops. He stops what he has been explaining and what he's been talking about, and he pretty much says, there's no point saying any more. There's no point saying any more yet. Not yet. I have to do something else first. Now, what has the author been saying? What does he want to say more about? What's he just been talking about? Well, he's been talking about the high priesthood of Jesus and how he's in the order of Melchizedek, uh, that Old Testament character that Abraham met. And he's showing how Melchizedek pictures Christ. And he's going to get back to more of this in great, greater detail in chapter 7 to 10. So then why does he say here that it's, it's hard to explain this and then he, he takes a stop from explaining it? Because he's going to do it later on. Why does he do that now? Well, it's because there's something more important that he needs to cover and deal with. It's not because these things that he's about to explain are intellectually difficult. No, verse 11 shows us the real reason. It says there, it's hard to explain 
because you are slow to learn. Now, I think it's a shame that some translations say it like this, because it could make you think that it's just that the, their problem is just this intellectual learning problem. But that's not the problem they have. The issue is a spiritual heart problem, this spiritual hearing heart problem that is in them. As we've said, it literally should be translated that they are dull of hearing, like the ESV and other translations say. Or you could say that they have lazy listening. And I think the rest of chapter 5 and into chapter 6 clearly shows this is a spiritual problem, not an intellectual one. Here in verse 11, we see the, the author sees something in his readers that he must address. And until he does, there's no point talking about these things of Christ. There's no point showing wonderful things of Christ because they won't get it. They aren't ready for it. There'd be no point. And so here in these verses, we see the author address the problem in his readers. And that's our first point in verse 11, the problem of dull hearing. That's our first point, the problem of dull hearing. Now, I think we need to realize about, it's helpful to realize about these readers that they weren't always like this. If you look at verse 11, uh, it doesn't show it very clearly in the NIV, but in verse 11, it has the perfect tense there and says, you have become dull of hearing. And this shows that the past state of these readers was in fact better. They had a better spiritual state in the past. And I think the lesson for us here is that we must be on guard. No matter where we think we're at spiritually, no matter how far we think we've progressed in the Christian life, there is danger to fall in to this disease and problem of dull hearing. It could infect us, and it is deadly. But what is it? We've talked about the problem of dull hearing. We need to know what it is. What is it? We need to understand it so that we can fix it and properly mature. And I think the end of this section will help us to understand it. Uh, The end of the section comes actually in chapter 6, verse 12. And there, the same word for dull is used. Have a look in chapter 6, verse 12, uh, verse 11 and 12. And here we'll see the same word dull used, and it's the only other time, actually, in the New Testament that this word is used. So chapter 6, verse 11 and 12 says, And we desire each one of you to show the same earnestness, to have the full assurance of hope until the end, so that you may not be sluggish, it's the same word dull, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit it, inherit the promises of God. To be dull, we see here, is to be sluggish. It is to be lazy. It's the same idea, to be lazy or sluggish. Either the readers are being spiritually lazy in their hearing, or they're not listening properly, or they're spiritually dull and resistant to what they hear. And I think it's possibly a combination of all of those things. But, but to further see what dull hearing is, I want us to look at the opposite of dull hearing. And I think Chapter 6, verse 11 to 12, shows us the opposite of dull hearing, and it should help us to understand what dull hearing is. So what's the opposite of dull hearing? Well, firstly, it is to be diligent and earnest. That's the opposite of dull dull hearing, to be diligent, diligent in listening. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 11 to 12, it says to show earnestness, if you look there, show earnestness to have full assurance of hope so that you aren't sluggish or dull. So show earnestness. Have diligence so that you aren't dull. Diligence is the opposite to being dull. But also there's something else here we see as the opposite to being dull. It's faith and patience. Faith and patience are the opposite to dull hearing. Have a look again. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12. It says, don't be sluggish, but instead, here's the opposite of being sluggish. Instead, imitate those who have faith and patience. That's the opposite of being dull. Responding with faith and patience when you hear God's Word. Also, I think chapter 4, verse 2 of Hebrews, it it sheds some more light on this problem of dull hearing. There it brings out the problem of dull hearing, I think, in another way. It actually says it like this. It says, Good news came to to us, just as to them. But the message they heard, did not benefit them because they were not united by faith with those who listened. The message is heard, they hear it, but the response of faith doesn't come. 
They don't have faith. So I think the opposite of dull hearing is hearing that unites with faith. This is why being dull of hearing is so deadly, because it stops the faith that is necessary to be saved, to enter into God's rest, as Hebrews 4 shows us. So what does it look like to not be dull of hearing? What's the opposite of dull hearing? Well, it is to overflow with diligent hope, as the word is heard. It is to respond with faith and patience. It is to pay attention, as Hebrews 2, 1 says, and to be receptive and responsive to God's word. And it is to have a heart that is supple, a heart that is submissive to God's word. And therefore, what is it then to be dull of hearing? If that's the opposite, what is it to be dull of hearing? Well, it is to have a deaf, hardened heart that stops the message of Christ from bringing the response of faith and obedience. That's to be dull of hearing. That, that's what it is, to be dull, dull of hearing. It is an indifferent, bored, distracted, immovable, hard heart that fails to believe and respond to God's word. Do you have that kind of hearing problem? When you hear God's word taught, when you read it, do you have that hearing problem? Have you become dull of hearing? Well, the next verses are going to show us some more symptoms, some symptoms of those who are dull of hearing and will help you check even further if you have this problem. So we've seen the problem of dull hearing and what it is. The second point we want to look at is the symptoms of dull hearing. And we see those in verse 12 to 13. Hebrews 5 12 to 13 says, In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. The people here that the author is speaking to, they're clearly immature and he rebukes them here for this and he's calling them baby Christians. This is the effect that their dull hearing has had on them. They should be mature. They should be able to teach. They should be eating solid food, but instead they're babies. They need milk. These verses show the result and the effect, the symptoms of dull hearing and they show why it is so deadly. So what are the the symptoms and results of dull hearing? Well, there's three of them here. First one, the first result is they are unable to teach. Verse 12 says, they by now should be able to teach others. They should be teachers. Now, this isn't just referring to those who had the gift of teaching in their churches, but it's all in the church who should be maturing others through their teaching and through their example. We all should be teachers to some degree. The readers of the Hebrew here, they, they have been Christians long enough to now be able to teach others, to now be able to spread the good news to others. And yet, they still need teaching. They need teachers to teach them the basic truths of God. Now, what are these basic truths, these elementary truths that the, the verse talks about? Well, some of them are actually listed In chapter 6, the the next couple of verses, chapter 6, verse 1 and 2 says, Therefore, let us leave the elementary teachings about Christ and go on to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God, instruction about baptisms, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. There's some of the elementary truths. There's some examples. And when it says these basic elementary truths, what it's, it's literally talking about is that they need to hear, these people still need to hear the ABCs of God's Word. That's what it's trying to say. They need to hear the ABC, ABCs of God's Word again. How down, downgrading on them? It's a severe rebuke that the author brings. It's harsh. He's harsh with them here. It would have been hard for these Christians to hear, these adult Christians who've been Christians for many years to hear, they need to get back to the basics again. Something has gone wrong with them. And it would have been hard for them to hear this. They aren't ready to teach others. They should be ready to teach others. Instead, they need the basics again. Are you like that? Are you like that? Are you the same? Do you still need to hear and live the basic kindergarten level truths about God? 
Too many Christians are, are like this and just keep on repeating the spiritual kindergarten, in a sense. They never move past that. The scary thing is as well, is as well some people actually want this. Some people want this. They don't want preachers or their Bible study leaders or anyone to speak about anything in depth. They don't want to hear anything that convicts them. They don't want to hear anything that's difficult to accept. No, they, they never want to move beyond the milk of God's Word. They just want to stay in kindergarten and they aren't happy if teachers or preachers go beyond that level. They're not happy. But as preachers of God's Word, all of us as teachers of God's Word, we are called to teach the whole counsel of God, as Paul says in Acts 20. We cannot shy away from things that might be controversial, difficult to accept, or that require spiritual maturity to understand. But unfortunately, people at times, Christians at times, they just want verse 12, the elementary truths about God. You hear it at times. And and it's a shame, because so many Christians are unable now to teach the basics of God's Word to others. And they don't. They don't teach the basics of God's Word to others because they don't know and live it properly. We need to grow. We need to move beyond this so that we can pass on what we know to others. So I I want you to ask yourself and challenge yourself, do I know these basic truths? Do I know them enough to teach others? Do I know the basic truths of salvation and God and who He is? to be able to teach that to others? Or am I lazy in my listening and in my learning? Am I not growing? Am I not growing and not able to teach others? Well, what's the next symptom we see of dull hearing? It's firstly, we we saw that these people are unable to teach others. The next symptom is as well that they need milk, not solid food. That's what we see there in the last half of uh, verse 12. It says, you need milk, not solid food. Now, as you read that, you might think, well, what's wrong with milk? Isn't milk good? It's not a bad thing, is it? Well, no, milk isn't, it good, uh, isn't bad. It, it's a great thing. Um, babies need milk. It's a great thing. And we need the milk of the basic truths of God as well when we are baby Christians. Milk is great. It's great for babies. It sustains them until they're ready for solid food. It also get, helps get them ready for the solid food and to be able to digest it. But the problem here is shown, the problem with milk and with these readers still needing milk, the problem is shown by the words, by this time or by now. They still need milk. That's the problem. By now, they should have grown up. By now, they should be adults. But, it says in there in verse 12, by this time, you ought to be teachers. But, at the end of verse 12, you need milk. That's the problem. They should be something else by now and yet they still need milk. And that's what's dreadfully wrong here with them. Something's dreadfully wrong if if you've been a baby for 20 years, and that's the problem with these readers, with those in Hebrews. The author wants us here to have the picture of an adult in nappies, still drinking milk, sucking on a dummy all day long. And that picture is wrong. There's something tragically wrong about that picture. And this is what these Christians were like. They were not growing up. It's like they were still 10, 15, 25, or 50, and still drinking milk and sucking on a dummy. And something's terribly terribly wrong if we are like this as Christians. If we are 10, 20, 30 years old as Christians, if we've been a Christian this long and we still need milk and only milk. We need to grow up. We need to mature in Christ and move on from the milk. We need to believe and respond with obedience to the milk of God's Word, the basic truths of God's Word, so then we're ready to move on to the solid food and believe and obey those things. And we need to realize as well here that the leaving of these elementary truths isn't leaving them behind. Verse 6 says, let us leave the elementary teachings about Christ. When it says that, it's not saying we, we need to leave behind the milk, we need to leave behind the basic truths of God's Word. No, it's not saying that. When, when we learn uh, the alphabet to learn reading, the most complex of readers still relies upon the basics of the alphabet to be able to read. And it's the same for us spiritually. We need to know the basic ABCs of God's truth, the basic teachings, and then we move on, but we still need to go back to them 
and they still permeate all the deeper things that we will cover and learn, the solid food that we will go through. We never move on from them, but we move on to then continue using them as we grow and mature. So this is the the next symptom of dull hearing. We've seen that they should be teachers, but they can't teach. We've seen here that they need milk, not solid food. And the final symptom we see in verse 13, it says they are unskilled in righteousness. Have a look, verse 13. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. Now, it's pretty harsh what the author says here in the the first part of verse 13, because he's just said in verse 12, as we saw, he said, you guys still need milk. You still need milk. And then he says, verse 13, anyone who needs milk, they're still an infant. It's the same word there for a baby. And so what the author is saying is, you are a bunch of babies. You still need milk, and milk's for babies. You guys are a bunch of babies. Grow up, is what he's trying to say. Now, there's nothing wrong with being a spiritual baby and needing milk. When we become a Christian, we need the milk. When we first become a Christian, we need the milk. But there's something wrong if we've been a Christian 10, 20, 30 years and we still can only handle the milk because we've never actually lived it out and believed it and been able to move on. And what shows they're babies? What shows that they still need the milk and that they are baby Christians in a sense? Well, it's because they're unacquainted or unskilled with the word of righteousness, verse 13 says. So what is that? What's the teaching about righteousness? Well, authors, commentators, they debate over this a bit and and say, well, uh, maybe it's the righteousness given to us by God through Christ, credited to us, or, or maybe it's speaking about that righteous living that we have. But in the end, I don't think it matters so much between differentiating between the two, because in the end, both are so intertwined, aren't they? Both are so intertwined. Yes, we need the righteousness from God. We need that righteousness credited to us because of all that Christ has done. But when that righteousness is given to us, we know that it will bring righteous living in us through God's Spirit, which He also gives to us. Truth and knowledge, truth and knowledge, and practice and living that knowledge, they must go hand in hand in the Christian life. They always go hand in hand. And there's a problem when they don't. There's a big problem if the message of God's word does nothing to us. And that was the problem in these uh, hearers, those in Hebrews. They were not living God's word properly. They didn't know it properly and they weren't living it properly. They weren't seeing the effects that the gospel should have on them. They weren't seeing the, the truth in Christ and who he was and the effect that they should have on their life. And they weren't doing this with the milk. They weren't doing this with the milk by believing it and responding properly to it. And so that's why the author here says they're not ready for solid food because they can't even do it with the the milk. If they can't respond and believe the milk of God's word, they will misuse the solid food of God's word. And so this here shows why they are dull of hearing. And these are the symptoms that show why they are dull of hearing and that this needs to change. And that brings us to the third point. In the passage, in verse 14, we see the cure for dull hearing. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14, and I'm going to read from the ESV this time um, just because the other translations miss some key things here. It says, Hebrews 5, 14, but solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. Who are the mature? It's those who discern and do what is right and true. That's the mature, those who discern and do what is right and true. Through practice, those who are mature have their spiritual senses trained to differentiate good and evil. The point here is that to be mature, we need to practice applying God's word to all of life and we need to grow in discernment. And there's a few key things going on here and I want to draw out as we look at this verse how we fix the problem of dull hearing. What is the cure to dull hearing? And there are three things. Firstly, the cure to dull hearing is to digest God's word. That's the key thing we must do. We need to remove the mind barrier in us and digest God's word. We need to be diligent to get as much milk, as much of the milk of God's word, the pure milk of God's word as we possibly can. Because if we don't, 
we will never be ready for solid food. But as we get the milk of God's word, there's something that must be done with it. Otherwise, there's no point getting it. We must receive it in a right way. We must believe and accept it and live the milk of God's word. We must do this. And we need to digest it in a right way and do the right thing with milk. Because if we can't do that, we won't be able to digest and do the right thing with solid food. And that was the problem with the Hebrews. They weren't doing the right thing with the milk of God's word, so they were never ready for the solid food. And so we must, if we are too cure dull hearing, we must keep digesting the milk of God's word. We must keep ourselves in God's word and we must ensure that we respond to it with faith. As we read promises about Christ, what he's done, as we read promises of God, it must grow faith in us. We must respond with faith immediately and we must obey. We must digest God's word, chew over it. And by this, by doing this, we will practice and grow the powers of discernment, as verse 14 says, and that will enable us to mature. The second thing, though, here, to cure dull hearing, the second thing we need to do is we need to actually not just digest God's word, but we need to do God's word. And this removes the moral barrier that is in us, that can stop our hearing, and that can cause dull hearing. To fix dull hearing, we need to become mature, and we need to become godly to fix dull hearing. Did you know that character, character is actually key to be able to accept the truths of God. Right character is key. To become mature and ready for God's word, we need to become more obedient and godly. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 1 to 3, it says something similar to our passage. It says this. Paul says, I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. And even now you are not ready for it, for you are still of the flesh. For while there is jealousy... And strife among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving in a human way? You will not be ready for solid food. And these people were not ready for solid food because they were of the flesh. And they were not being righteous. And you will not be ready for the solid food of God's word when you're of the flesh. Paul says there in 1 Corinthians 3, verse 3, if you are causing strife, if you are gossiping, If you are full of jealousy, you are not mature. You are of the flesh. You're dull of hearing and you need milk. You aren't ready for solid food from God's word. You need milk. It's because godliness, our godliness affects how we hear God's word and our ability ability to accept and live it. We must first be righteous. We must be righteous and grow in godliness if we are to properly respond and accept God's word. And this connects to the final way of how we cure cure dull hearing. To cure dull hearing, we must also, which verse 14 shows, we must develop our spiritual senses. This removes that spiritual heart barrier in us that stops us from properly hearing God's word. We need to develop our spiritual senses. The word for discernment there in verse 14, that, that word there refers to our senses, the faculties of our inner person. And to be mature, we need to grow these senses. We need to grow in wisdom, with right spiritual perception and with spiritual humility to be able to accept and discern what is right and true. If we don't have that, we won't accept God's word. Often we, we're like this. We, we don't understand God's word. We don't live God's word. We don't believe God's word because we actually don't like God's word and we don't like what it says. We have a spiritual problem with God's word. And we cannot be mature. You cannot be mature when you hate God's word and when you hate what it says. We need our heart to be dealt with. We need this spiritual problem to be dealt with because too often our hearts are hardened and dull of hearing. And we hate what God's word says and we're not able to accept it and live it. And this is the problem that the Hebrews had. Instead, we need our hearts to be able to perceive what is true, to discern what is true, as verse 14 says. We need humble hearts to be trained up in us so that we accept God's word as good and true. 
That's what verse 14 is talking about. And so if we want that to happen, what we must do is pray. We must pray for a receptive, discerning heart, for our humble heart towards God's Word. We must pray that the Lord would make us eager and diligent to hear His Word, that He would unite it with faith, that He would cause us to respond with righteousness, and that He would make us supple and receptive and responsive to God's Word. We must pray that. Lord, make me receptive to Your Word. Humble me to accept Your Word when I may hear things that I hate. We need to pray for God to do this. Because until we do, we will not be cured of dull hearing. So what have we seen here in in verse 14? How do we cure dull hearing? Well, we must be constantly digesting God's Word. We must be constantly doing God's Word, discerning, and also developing spiritual sensitivity to God's Word and humility to God's Word. Those things are the remedy to that problem of dull hearing. That's what we must grow in, to remedy the problem of dull hearing that may be in us. So I ask you, as I close, do you have that problem of dull hearing? Have you become dull in how you hear God's Word? Are you slow to grow in the things of Christ? Do you fail to to cherish Christ when you hear of Him, when He's taught? Do you fail to cherish and delight in the salvation that you have in Him? Are you often saying and thinking and feeling, why am I not growing? Why am I so stagnant in the Christian life? Why am I bored with God's Word? Do you long for greater maturity? Do you feel like this? Do you long to progress in the faith more? If you do, if that is you, and I hope it is if you're a Christian, then you need to check, do I have this problem of dull hearing? Is this stopping me from maturing and growing? And you need to pray. Pray hard for God to remedy the problem of dull hearing in you. That he would overcome the mind barriers, the moral barriers and those spiritual barriers that are in us that stop us from properly hearing God's word. You need to pray that God would overcome those things and remedy the problem of dull hearing in us so that we grow and mature in Christ. Let's pray. Our great God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the conviction that it brings. We thank you for also the truth and the practical lessons that it teaches. We thank you for how it cuts to our heart, reveals our problems, reveals our sin and the hardened hearts that we have towards you. And we pray, God, that your word would also soften our heart now, that it would soften us to respond in faith and obedience and that it would soften us to call out for you to remedy in us the problem of dull hearing if it is there. Please, God, remove this from us. Help us to be diligent in how we listen. Help us to respond with faith and obedience every time we hear your word. Please, God, work this in us so that we will be a people transformed, ready to serve you. We need this and we desire this. We desire to grow. We desire to mature. We want to grow up. Please keep working this in us, God, we pray. And we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, may God bless you this week as you continue to be in his word and may you be a hearer of his word this week, but also a doer and not a dull hearer. Amen.